Hello everyone, welcome back to F123 Breaking Point. If you guys remember previous episode, bit of a uh, bit of an interesting one. We finally, you know, got the bombshell, finally found out what was happening with Devon. He had a bit of a medical issue with his ears. He couldn't hear properly. So that has sort of explained what has been happening with his behavior. And I guess his personality in a way I've sort of mellowed, you know, in terms of my perspective on Devon. And um, yeah, so because of that, he's had to retire. And obviously the news is basically uh, a wash with news about Devon and his retirement or his rather disappearance, which is what a lot of people are wondering in the social media sphere. As you can see, a lot of people wondering what is happening with Devon, where is he? He's not at the Spanish Grand Prix, which is where we are right now. But there's also, uh, towards the end of the episode, we found out Cali is headed over. So, uh, which actually another bombshell, Cali is uh, Davidov's daughter. Had no idea, but he explained a lot of things about Callie's uh, reluctance to talk about her father whenever her mum will bring up her dad. But uh, interesting, Devon's sister. So it, a lot of lot of things were revealed to us in the previous episode, and I uh, hope uh, much more will be revealed as we go forward. And with that said and done, let's jump into the race. Remember, as always, leave a like, subscribe, leave your comments, all that good stuff. Let me know what you think about the series. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's jump into the race. Right, so here we go, Spanish Grand Prix, Chapter 10, Race Day, racing with the team's reserve driver. Cottersport looked to Aiden Jackson to help keep them afloat in the standings while a more permanent replacement for Devon is arranged. And I believe the reserve driver they are speaking about is someone named Noah. So, no idea who that is, I'm not that familiar with this person, but we'll see how we go in the Spanish Grand Prix. Circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia, as we proceed through to race day to see just who will claim victory at the Spanish Grand Prix. It's an updated track at Catalonia, and we welcome the removal of the chicane in the final sector, shortening lap times and reducing the total running to 2.9 miles and 14 turns. This was actually the original setup for the track, but it hasn't been used since 2007. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Russell, Norris, Hamilton, Gasly, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Joe, Sargent, Bottas, Magnussen, Ocon, Hulkenberg, De Vries, Jackson, Stroll, Albon, and Noah Bell. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Welcome to the wonderful Catalonia. It's time for the Spanish Grand Prix this weekend. And whilst the season is just a few races old, it's already been one full of drama. So, Natalie Pinkham, who have you got your eye on this weekend? Well, in Formula One, naturally, the conversation is drawn towards those at the top of the standings, both drivers and teams. But I'm really intrigued by the midfield team of Connor Sport. Devon Butler's absence will definitely be felt. There's no doubt about that, both on and off the track. For me, the interesting thing will be how they move forward without him. Indeed, almost as many battles off the track as there are on it for Connor Sport at the moment. And Kasper Ackerman and his team certainly have their work cut out for them this weekend. I know it's been a mad few weeks, mate, but you've always gone well here. So let's get your head down and see what we can do. Come on. Right, so here we go. So Connor Sport haven't exactly qualified in the best of positions. Aiden in 19th and Noah Bell, the reserve driver, dead last. So very interesting. Good to see Ferrari in pole position. Charles Leclerc and Max Super Max Verstappen is in P3, which is interesting. Not something you see that often, particularly in the 2023 season. What's the strategy we're going to go with? It's going to be interesting. Should we switch to the hards? I think, because we have a total of 17 laps, we should think about going as fast as we can, making up those spots. We will go with the soft and uh, one stop over to the mediums. And let's dial down our fuel load as well, just a tad. We'll give ourselves one lap of extra fuel just to account for any safety cars. And also, 
Oh, this is the first time we can, I think, load ourselves a setup. So I'm just going to go with the setup that I've been trialing, you know, <laughs> away from uh, the career mode or this uh, story mode, rather, just on multiplayer time trials. Hopefully it'll work. Let's see how it goes. Let's jump into the race. Right, so here we go. Primary objective, try and secure as many points as possible. It's going to be a tall order, particularly... Oh, there we go. Bonus objective as well. That's going to be a very tall order. Finish in front of Alonso. Basically at the back of the field. Five lights. Here we go. And away we go in Spain. Trying to manage that wheel spin. And try to use our ERS. Trying to catch up to Hulkenberg. I'm just going to skirt the grass here. Coming through Hulkenberg. Whoa, sent it. Full send down the outside. Managed to make the move stick. I will have to try and acclimate myself again because I've just been playing iRacing before jumping onto this game. And I gotta say, the way the throttle and the brakes work in that game is far less, far more different compared to this. So, I'm gonna have to get to grips. We'll have to uh, <laughs> play this game again to try and catch up to Joe. Certainly the force feedback, as much as it is working, it does feel a little bit more powerful compared to iRacing. So we've got Bottas behind us. Right, so there's the end of the first lap. And... Try to be very gentle on the throttle here. Try and catch up to Joe. Not exactly the best start, but considering we made up, what, six spots up to P13 from P19, I would guess it's pretty good overall. Alright, we're slowly closing the gap on Joe. Hopefully next time around we'll get DRS and get a little bit more straight line speed. Well, we got very close to Joe there. All right, across the line to finish off our second lap. And now we got DRS starting off our third lap. We set personal best sectors, which is good. Not that many spots to go before we can get up to the points. Sonoda currently in P11. And it looks like Alonso is our target as we set the fastest first sector. So... The bonus objective is to finish in front of Sainz and Alonso. So, if we can get to Alonso, that's the primary objective done as we get DRS. Very good. Oh, not exactly the best. Middle sector gets very squirrely in that particular corner. My gosh. Hopefully we can use DRS to our advantage. Close the gap and show. We're just going to empty out the ERS because we've got to get this move done already. Going to go for... Whoa! We're just maxing out on speed as we just set it down the inside. Joe gives us the space. Got to maintain the inside line around this long sweeping right-hander. And Joe falls back into line. As now, we've got to chase down Sonoda and then Alonso. Man, this car is just not feeling it. Alright, but we got DRS, so let's try and rinse and repeat what we did with Joe. Got to use ERS. Car is just going to hit terminal velocity. And get the job done, alright. Whoa! 
Oh gosh, lost that spot to Zenoda again. Man, this car is just absolutely slidey. I do have all the assists off, including traction control. Okay, this is not a spot where you want to pass, but I'm just going to get it done anyways. <laughs> Whew. All right, so lap nine. And we're no close to Alonso. As we're basically going to be boxing though at the end of this lap because these tires are absolutely gone. I have destroyed them. <laughs> but I can still sort of make out Alonso in the distance there so let's see it'll be interesting to see what Aston Martin do with Alonso and whether us Pitten will ultimately end up undercutting them whoa I'm really struggling with his tires at this point Time management is not my forte in this game. Whoa, whoa. Oh, there's the pit lane. <laughs> I completely forgot where the pit lane was. Oh, here we go. All right. Man, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. I mean, Alonso's in the pit, so... And I wonder what tires they're going to put him on. So we won't be able to get the undercut on Alonso. But we shall see as he gets out of the pits an optimal pit time which is good that was good pit stop six seconds man six bloody seconds oh man gotta get some heat into this tires Okay, across the line to start our 12th lap. We've got Ocon right behind us, and I think we're slowly eating away into Alonso's gap. But still, we've got a lot of work to do. I am sweating like crazy. I think we will have to settle for just finishing in P10 if we can get to Alonso. Okay, here we go. So we're in the latter part of lap 15. And we've closed the gap to Alonso within a second now. Car gets very squirrely. I think I grabbed second gear by accident there. I don't think we're in range for DRS. Nope. That's right. We'll try and use the very little ERS we have left. And uh, just straight line speed that we seem to have on Alonso. Whoa, very squirrely. This tyres are, I think, almost gone as well. Okay, around the final corner, onto the main straight to start the final lap. We got DRS, baby. Here we come, Alonso. Alonso going very defensive. We bumped wheels for a second there. Going very deep into the braking zone there. But primary objective done. Now to keep Alonso behind us, but... Man, this car is just understeering like crazy. And Max Verstappen and wins the Grand Prix. Man, this car is so understeery. I've got no grip, man. Bono, my tires. My tires, Bono. Here comes Alonso again. Can we fend him off? This is going to be down to the wire. Got to use all the ERS we have. He's going to get TRS as well, but across the line. P10, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was intense. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Whew. So it's Aiden Jackson propping up Connorsport here today, but the big news off the track is the speculation about this team and whether or not they'll see out the season with their current lineup. Well, I think they'll have to sign a new driver, Crofty. It's a gamble worth taking. Well, the mid season signing would get us all talking, I'm sure, but time will tell. Yeah, mid-season uh, signing, that's the word. Drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. What happened to Ferrari? Wow, the Ferrari is just... Didn't make it work, this race. That's interesting. I wonder what happened to Charles and Carlos.
Well, that was interesting. Let's see how we go in the press. Are in a bit of an odd situation right now. So, just tell me, what is it like for you today? Oh man, yeah, I would say it's pretty strange. Uh, but you you do what you can. Yes. <laughs> uh, not so long ago, my teammate was Devon, and um, we had a plan sorted out for the rest of the season. Uh, now it's Noah, and uh, for the last couple of races, uh, suddenly nobody's quite sure what the situation is. I've never had to drive in this, this this situation before, so it's all pretty strange, but you do what you can. Most importantly, how is Devon? And how are you finding it without your teammate? Yeah, I mean, he's missing. Uh, I don't think everyone knows what has happened with him. We, we know. I believe Aiden knows what has happened with him. Um, I think uh, we'll go with we're all concerned about him. <laughs> as much as everybody else so you know i saw what happened i'm obviously very worried for him and as is everybody else and you know i know he's not fit to drive for us right now as far as i know he's working super hard to return to the sport and um yeah i wish him well well there's a lot of talk about what happens if devon doesn't return would connor sport be looking for a new driver do you think ah uh, interesting yeah i mean i would say that's a question for casper technically but I think we'll just go with that's a question for Casper. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a question for Casper. Um, I know they need to plan for every every situation. That's just the nature of the sport. But you know, if those discussions are happening, I'm definitely not involved with that. Well, thank you for chatting with us. Great to have your time. No worries at all, Natalie. There's Oscar. Hello, mate. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who is Connor Sport going to sign. Will it be Cali Mayer? We shall find out. Um, advance. And that's it. No, no cutscene or anything. We're back in the paddock, back in the garage. And I think that is probably where we're going to leave it for this episode. Bit of a, uh, you know, just a bit of a straightforward episode race. And then. Uh, press talk and that is basically it i hope you guys enjoy this as always leave a like comment all that good stuff and as always take care of yourselves and i will catch you guys in the next episode